quick announcement at the end of the video. Make sure to watch till the end. All right, guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be looking at is the jigsaw block, and we're going to break down all the different settings for the jigsaw block today. Now, there are three things at the very bottom here. Levels, keep jigsaw on, and generate. These are not required for basically saving your jigsaw blocks. You can just leave them as the default values. Everything above that though, so the selection priority, placement priority, joint type, um, the turns into target name, name, and target pool are all required for your, uh, your actual jigsaw block structures. So we'll be covering everything today and you might notice that the joint type is not present on the ones that are facing sideways like this. That is deliberate, we'll be covering that as well. So um, first things first, uh, getting the block, we'll cover that right now. So to obtain the block, you're going to need a world uh, with cheats enabled. If you don't have a world with cheats enabled, maybe like survival or something like that, um, most likely it's not going to have cheats enabled. You can do that through enabling the world when you're actually at the title screen, and then you can enable cheats through a new generation for a world. It's probably best to do it in a super flat world so we have everything configured and you can back up the world for when you might need to uh, make tweaks or anything like that to your uh, mod itself. Or you could just um, do it in your survival world, I guess. But uh, if you don't have cheats enabled, what you can do is you can go and do the to the title screen and go open to LAN and make sure that cheats is allow cheats and most likely if you're in a survival world and you don't have cheats enabled then it's going to look something like this you just set this to creative allow on and then you would open your port and that will allow you to use commands now i highly recommend already configuring your world for a super flat and basically making sure that cheats is enabled and creative mode this will make building a lot easier for actually putting your jigsaw blocks together and stuff and obviously it's just going to make your time a lot easier also it, super flat worlds don't take that much space to actually save files on so if you want to back up your worlds and stuff like that for all your work that you do do um it will basically be a lot smaller in file size than if you were to save in something like a, our actual minecraft world so just keep that in mind when you're actually setting up your uh, project workspace for your actual structures and stuff. Right, so obtaining the block you would basically just go and do slash uh, give at p for the nearest player which is obviously the person that is running the command and then you would do jig and by then it should come up with minecraft jigsaw block and you can press tab to autofill and then it will basically select that. You can set the count if you want to, but you only really need this part and it'll give you one of these blocks. So that's like literally the way that you get the um, particular bar part. It looks very similar to a structure block, which we've already covered in the series. So if you're not familiar how to use a structure block, go back and check out the uh, previous video. Link will be in the description. All right, so target pool and name and target name we'll be covering those three settings right now your target pool is a list of structures that you're going to be assigning um, basically as a list so basically when you create your structure you're going to be putting it under a target pool and that target pool is going to be basically what it's going to be looking for in this particular one now in the next episode for the tutorial I'll be covering the um, the actual structure element and we'll be coming back into game and showing you how to set that up for the target pool itself because that's going to be really important to actually do with M Creator. So done a little bit differently than how uh, you would normally do it with a data pack or something like that but don't worry about that at the moment just worry about how this actually works. So again target pool is just a list of structures that it's going to go through and what it's going to do is it's going to use the target name to search for all the jigsaw blocks in that particular structure entry and it's going to try to match up that um, variable that you basically assigned to what your um, what that basically name is in that jigsaw block so 
Uh, for example, um, it's going to select for, for example, we have one for entry one. It's going to go through each jigsaw block and it's going to say, okay, is that name of that jigsaw block the same as our target name? If it's true, then it's going to basically place a random structure um, based on the, the, the same name. So the name needs to be the same as the target name. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, once you understand how that works, so these two need to match up in order for the, the block to actually be generated. Target pool is just generally a list of structures that it's going to be going through to find that particular uh, order for a connection. All right, so turns into, so basically what you're going to have by default is something called Minecraft Air. This is just going to replace the block with an air block when it finishes generating. In some cases, that's fine. Um, other cases, you might not want to do that. Uh, for example, if you have a floor or something that needs to be there, um, when you're developing like complex structures and stuff like that, sometimes you have to replace certain blocks, and that's where the um, turns into comes really in handy. So, for example, um, if we were to have a path, say like this, we have our, um, I'll just basically shovel this uh, down. So we'll go something like this, for just to make it a little bit easier to understand. So uh, we have our path like this, and then we have our path like that. Well, if we wanted to uh, basically go ahead and have this replace, um, not as air, because basically what it would happen is it would just basically replace it like this, and that would be great. These two would basically connect up over on these parts, but what's going to happen is if you don't want that to happen, uh, what you can do is you can replace the block that's there with another block. So if we look at the um, F3, so if we go to F3H, uh, we can see that we have, uh, by default, we're just not seeing any data about these blocks. Uh, we can go F3H again when we're in the game like this and it'll show advanced tooltips. And then we get the Minecraft uh, colon dirt path. So basically that's the name that you would basically put into your turns into. So dirt path. And this can be your under your na own mod namespace as well. And that would work as well, or even your uh, own data pack and stuff like that. So basically what now it's going to do is rather than turn it into Minecraft Air, it's going to replace these blocks like this. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense of how the turns into part works. The other two properties down here are, we're going to be covering one of those at a time because they're a little bit new and I'm not fully sure how they all work. So selection priority, uh, when you set this number to a higher number, uh, there is some help on this particular one. Uh, there is not too much help on the other ones, so I'll do, do my best to explain how this particular works. So when you ha set a selection priority to a higher number, that higher number is always going to be a priority before any other lower number. So when it's going through the target pool, it's going to try to find ones with a higher selection priority and it's going to choose one from that list possibly first before it tries to get to something like zero. Uh, negative values I don't think work but uh, you can set these to between like four, uh, zero and whatever number you want to set your priority to. Uh, if you want it to be random, uh, any th numbers that are under that particular list first. So if it's a tie for the probability of it being able to generate, what it's going to do is it's going to randomize the um, selection. So basically if you have two things under say ID4 and that's generated first, then if both of those are valid, what it's going to do is it's going to basically randomize between one of those two structures. Um, same thing if it's under any ID. If you want it to be completely random, you can just leave this to zero and it will generate completely randomly throughout your entire pool. So there's always that. Now for placement priority, um, very similar to how the selection priority works, but this is going to basically allow it to um, have priority over placement. So I think what this is going to what this means is um, when it gets selected, 
what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to override the uh, value of when the actual part gets generated. So I think it will like have different priorities when other parts are generating. So for example, if you have a part that's connecting here, you might have another one over on the side, maybe a lamppost or something like that. We, we'll just use that as an example. If you have this, this is the part that's connecting and uh, or generating or something like that. So we'll say this is generating. So um, basically if this is set to generate a lamppost and maybe we have the um, this part that expands to the next path, then what we could do is we could set the placement to a higher number for the path and that would give it a priority to generate this particular part, I think. I'm not sure if that's the case. Um, placement, it might be the other way around. It might be for the part that's connecting to. So maybe this would be like, this would be one and then you would have your other one that's uh, facing downwards over here. We'll just say this is facing downwards and that could be priority one or something like that or priority zero. Um, and that would basically give the part over here priority. I think that's how it works. I'm not sure. There's not a lot of information about how it works, and I haven't had too much time to play around with this, but generally that's what I understand from what it says here. I could be completely wrong. Uh, if you want to correct me in the comments, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, basically it would have the priority of when things are being placed. I'm not sure if that's based on the generation or if it's based on the child of the structure. You can always set these to uh, one both. It should make too much difference when you're actually generating it. But And that basically leaves us with one last feature uh, that we can cover. And that's the rollable or joint type. So when you have a structure that's facing up and down like this, uh, what it's going to be set to by default is rollable, which is your joint type here. Basically what that means is it's going to rotate randomly on the north, east, south, and west directions. Uh, both of these would be set to rollable by default. So if you wanted it to match up very similar to how these ones match up with aligns, what you can do is you can set this to aligned. And what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that when this particular structure uh, generates, it's going to match the lines up with the uh, jigsaw block that is generating and the child generating block or generated block. So this can be handy when you want to put props down that might, um, for example, have rotation based things. Uh, for example, we could grab a barrel and if we place the barrel like this, we could always make sure that the front is facing the aligned way uh, based on the aligned method. So basically that will allow us to make sure that the barrel is always facing a certain direction. Uh, we could have like maybe a wall at the back here and maybe some decorations for the sides here. We could always make sure that that chest or the barrel is facing the correct way when we're actually having it aligned. Now, if it's not aligned and it's set to rollable, then what it's going to do is it's going to randomly place the structure like this on these axes. So it's always going to be at a random direction. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it's not really that too complicated when you're actually playing around with it and stuff like that, but uh, it takes some time to understand the variables. Now I'm just going to quickly demonstrate uh, the settings when you're actually setting these up. So when you're setting your generator block, we'll just add an indicator over here for our generator. Say this is our generator and then we'll use green for our generated or our child block here. So this is the part that's going to be generating. This is the part that is generating the child. So our generator and then our child block that's going to be connecting to this block. So when you have your generator, what you want to do is you want to set your pool. So generally this would be under your namespace. So we could do test. That's the namespace that I'm currently under. And then you would do your pool name. So in regular Minecraft, this could be anything that you want it to be. In M Creator, it's going to be a little bit different. I'll be covering that part in the next video. 
but for now just for simplicity we're just going to call this target pool something like stone and uh, or we could do stone structures and then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set our target name for this generator as well so uh, for this I'm just going to go test and we're going to go stone for example and that's just going to be the variable name stone that we're going to be looking through the stone structures uh, we can also set our variable to red wool for the block that it replaced that should be the id that it is red wool yep so that's good and then for our generating one so our child that's basically generating we can leave these two the same we'll set this to lime wool and that will generate that part and then what we need to do is we need to make sure that our name is the same as stone for our variable so basically what this is going to do it's going to search for the target name in the pool called stone structures and then it's going to basically go through the list and try to find one with the same target name as this one here so it's going to find that and go okay we can place that and that's basically what's going to happen so hopefully that makes sense uh, that's the same thing as if you were to set it up this way so it doesn't really matter on what axis it's going on it's just going to be located that direction so basically your generator type you're going to leave this one as minecraft empty and you're going to leave these two as minecraft empty for your child and your generator is just going to be the name for the minecraft empty and that will just make sure that there are no errors actually generate when you're actually generating your structures if you set this to a blank value it's going to cause some errors uh though it should still generate but just to keep console clean and stuff like that i suggest leaving the anything any values that you're not going to be using as minecraft empty so hopefully that helps today with understanding jigsaw blocks um i know it's a little bit of a hard topic to cover Hopefully I explained it well in today's video. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'm always available on uh, the Discord server, my Discord server, if you need help uh, regarding these kinds of tutorials and stuff like that. Um, I'm active on helping people during the weekdays. Uh, weekends, I take the, day, the, the weekend off, um, but you can ask your question there and I'll be able to support you uh, as best as I can. So I have this friend that has their own server hosting company and they have the lowest prices in the server hosting community and they've given me a promo code to give to you guys. So if you want to get a good deal for the first month, then you can use the promo code Northwest for 45% off your first month. Offer expires July 19th, 2034. The link to their site is in the description. Outside of that, if you're new to my channel, don't don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.